Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest Fireside Chat. I am joined by Pankaj Jindal, who is the co-founder of Sense. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk all about feast versus famine and how to handle this current market that we're in. And obviously, we're focused way more on the famine element of not having enough candidates to fill the roles you're looking to make placements within. So today we are going to talk specifically about AI and automation and how that can actually equip you in both of those scenarios, knowing that famine really is the space we're in right now. So just as a brief background, uh, you know, most people watching this, I would venture to say everyone watching this knows about Sense. They've been around for the last six years. Uh, Pankaj, prior to that, spent 15 years leading staffing firms. And so like many of you and myself, he's no stranger to the space and has a passion and a nerdiness for it. So why don't we go ahead and jump right in? Pankaj, can you share a little bit more with us about God, what, you, what you've seen with this feast or famine era that, we, that we're toggling between? Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, yeah, thanks for calling me a nerd. I definitely think of myself as a staffing nerd. Um, you know, this one thing that we talk about a lot now, Kelly, is uh, clearly it's, you know, we've seen a few paradigm shifts over the last, you know, call it a couple of years. Maybe the pandemic precipitated it, you know, maybe it was a long time coming. But I think there are three big trends that uh, everybody should be aware of. The the first trend is we've now gotten into a world which is very much a candidate's market. Uh, you know, there is absolute shortage of talent. Candidates actually, uh, you know, call the shots right now for, for everybody who has ever thought, thought about a war on talent. Uh, they need to know that the war is over and talent won. So, you know, so that's, I think, the first paradigm shift, mm -hmm. which is the bit, it is the candidate's market. There are fewer people at work than the number of jobs that we have open. The second, I think, big trend here is uh, staffing as an industry is getting very consumerized. You know, a candidate now expects the same behavior and the same experience that they expect from a consumer company. So they, sure. when they talk to a staffing firm, they want to be treated exactly like they get treated by amazon.com. You know, please remember my preferences. Call me over, you know, if I told you to text me, text me, don't email me. If I asked you to email me, email me, don't text me. So that's, I think, where a lot of automation comes in because you just have to do this now at scale. Totally. And then the third big thing I think we talk about a lot is, uh, you know, partly the pandemic precipitated the need for digital transformation. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, most people were somewhere on their journey of a digital transformation, but the pandemic precipitated it. Uh, you know, when people realized that they could no longer you know, see their own staff members, they couldn't see their customers, they couldn't see their employees, uh, the need for technology became even more dire and people had to sort of transform overnight. So what has that led to, which is our sort of topic for the day, right? Exactly. This, whole idea, this whole idea of feast versus famine. There are very few companies, I think, that are still experiencing some sort of a feast. And by feast, I mean, hey, I have an open position, I put it out there and hundreds of people are applying uh, just because maybe the position is lucrative and a lot of people are out of job and you know they want to apply to this position. But now there are three, four, five times the number of candidates who are applying and I don't have three, four, five times the number of recruiters to screen these people. So at some point, you need a technology solution to interact with these folks and so to speak, find the needle in the haystack. Mm -hmm. But the part that I think a lot more of our audience would relate with uh, is essentially the famine part, which is, uh -huh. hey, I'm putting these positions out, but nobody's applying because either people are still not willing to work, some are afraid of the pandemic, others are you know, happy collecting unemployment checks or stimulus money, or others want to change, you know, have had a sort of a deep look at what they want to do next and they want to change their career and they don't want to do what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. But either case, it's leading to lesser number of people applying that you would hope for. And when I say lesser, this problem is actually quite dire. We've actually come across companies that tell us we have 500 positions open and 1,000 positions open and we can't find people. Right, right. So, so there, I mean, if I were to use sort of an analogy, you just have to cast a wider net, right? I mean, eventually, uh, ultimately, if you were reaching out to 15 people before and you knew that you would find somebody, now you probably need to reach out to 100 people to find that person. And again, you don't have five times the number of recruiters. Right. So, you, so the only way you can do this again is by using technology. So 
my chief message here is first of all there have there has been some seismic shifts in the industry that have led to digital transformation that have led to change in the candidate behavior uh, and then that has led to you know just a shortage of talent and then both of those lead to scenarios that actually require ai as well as automation yeah no it's so true and and i know we just both got back from staffing world uh, yeah. and I was floored by the amount of conversations around marketing automation. And, and obviously it's, it's a really hot topic right now, but what I did not anticipate was getting into conversations with $20 million firms saying, well, I just implemented uh, a tool like sense or sense specifically. And I've got those birthday and anniversary journeys workflows, but God, like, where do I go from here? But then also having conversations with companies that are multi-billion dollars saying, We've, we've been an early adopter, uh, but we need to really hone in our segmentation or like we need to really reevaluate our messaging and make sure that just because we have these journeys or workflows set up, uh, we need to verify like, is this actually accomplishing our business goals? And that was a, a tech talk that I did at Staffing World. You know, I know you had some fun conversations as well, just about there are so many elements to think about. You know, I, I like to compare it to, you can get really excited about any uh, HR tech, you know, and it, if you buy it, it could become the most expensive shiny tool on your shelf that you never use. But if you right. actually harness it, I mean, it could be a game changer for your industry with creating a, or your business, excuse me, with creating efficiencies and driving revenue. So yeah, I'd love to hear and just ultimately share with people listening uh, what some of those tangible examples have been, where you've seen companies say, I don't have enough candidates. And of course I have hundreds of thousands of people in my ATS, you know, what, what's the connection between here's my problem. I've got people I can contact. How do I, how do I harness the power of a tool like sense to yeah. turn it around? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. I think you hit on like a number of different things. So I'm going to try and uh, break your question and uh, hopefully try and give some commentary around a number of very interesting things that you mentioned. You know, first of all, you're absolutely right. Uh, a product like Sense is currently being used by a company that is super small, 10 to $20 million in revenue, and also super large, 10 to 20 billion in revenue, yeah, yeah. and has completely different use cases. I mean, if you look, about, look at a small company, they're actually able to use a product like Sense to mimic exactly what a billion dollar company would be able to do. So a company yeah. that size, you know, they've probably never thought about a recruitment marketing automation before. They probably haven't thought about just you know, uh, automatic capturing people who come to their website and automatically screening them and scheduling them. So all the kind of things that would have required another recruiter, another sourcer, another account manager, which for a small company is a huge decision because when you're a $20 million company, you're not going to add 50 to $100,000 in cost by adding another employee, but mm -hmm. Sense can help you accommodate all of that. And it's funny that example that you took, there are a lot of customers who even come to us and say automating simple things that take recruiters time, like happy birthdays and how are you doing? And can you send us a referral? And can you fill in this exit survey? And did you get your first paycheck? Even those things would take away 20 to 30% of the busy time that a recruiter has and actually convert that time into them talking to uh, hiring managers or candidates and actually helping close revenue. So that's, you know- Which one is part. also more fulfilling, right? It, it not only saves- time and creates better efficiency, but I don't know any recruiter that signed up to say, I want to verify that somebody started. Or I want to verify that they got their well, paycheck. Like they want to have right. meaningful conversations that, that progress careers and build companies, right? Absolutely. I mean, not only is it more fulfilling, like you said, it actually helps them make more money, right? I mean, and everybody right. essentially, you know, looking to do that as well. So that's number one. And the second thing that you said about the multi-billion dollar companies, that is exactly super spot on as well. We now talk to multi-billion dollar firms that tell us that 30, 40, 50% of the placements that they make every single year come from the people that were already sitting in their database. Sure, sure. So, you know, they can now use a marketing automation platform like Sense to make sure that these people are always updated. You have the right information. They're always activated. So you can exactly, you can actually start saving some money on maybe job board costs or elsewhere, uh, you know, where you're, where you're spending tons and tons of dollars. So there is, you know, there's certainly that. And then uh, I probably have dozens of examples. I'm going to try and give you a couple of those, uh, as Perfect. you said, about how companies have used this, right? So, you know, one is, 
you know, this one particular company that I'm thinking about, they're over a billion dollars in revenue. The one thing that they did is they started using the chat bot, which I think is, which is the AI based conversational recruiting assistant, which really is what helps you with feast and famine. And I'll go into that here in a second, but they started using the chat bot and found out that they saved just within the first month, their recruiters over 800 hours. Wow. Uh, they generated 14 times the margin dollars than they were spending on cents in just one month. One four? 14? Yeah, one four, 14. Wow. Four wow. Times the ROI of what they were spending on cents in just a single month, right? So let's kind of break down on what a conversational recruiting assistant can do for you. So somebody comes to your website or you reach out to a thousand people and say, we think you're a good fit for this job. You can instantly give them a quick link and say, please click here to answer a few questions. Now you can do that over a text message. You can do that via an email. You can do that over a browser. And depending on the kind of job that you're hiring for, you're asking people the same exact screening questions that your recruiters would have spent time mm -hmm. asking. Mm -hmm. Are you authorized to work in the US? You know, have you ever gotten a DUI? How many years of experience do you have? Are you willing to work for this amount of money? Are you willing to work in this zip code? If not, are you willing to relocate? Everything that somebody's going to ask anyway, you can do that at scale with tens of thousands of people and then actually add that into your uh, add that into your infrastructure and then figure out, okay, well, this information is in the ATS and we can trigger journeys from here. Right. Well, and how so, beautiful is it that there, there doesn't need to be the back and forth of when do we schedule time and that recruiter looking at their day going, God, I'm already screening eight people and I've got these other internal meetings. Like I can't talk to you until tomorrow or a few days out. I mean, for a candidate, I would imagine that that experience and that process, while it is automated and may not have as personal of a touch, allows them to also see if they're a fit for it and then they can move faster so that, you know, once you get down that funnel, you've got the right people connected to your recruiters and it's just That's more exactly meaningful right. conversations, right? That's exactly right. And I will tell you something about the whole personal touch here. So anytime a chatbot talks to a candidate, uh, what we actually do is towards the end of the conversation, we have them rate the conversation. Hey, how mm -hmm. satisfied you were with this? Uh, the satisfaction rating of the chatbot is currently at 94%. Wow. People, people like this a lot more. I came to your website. Mm -hmm. I had some intent. I immediately was talking to somebody and 15 seconds later, 30 seconds later, I basically found out, yeah, you qualify. And I was able to pick up a time of my own choosing mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, uh, set up a conversation with a recruiter. You know, interestingly, during the pandemic, that became a killer feature for, for example, for healthcare staffing. You sure. know, in, yeah, in the healthcare space, as it turns out, nurses and healthcare workers, they only have, you know, free time at midnight. Uh, that's when they get a break. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how are they going to talk to a recruiter, right? So, I mean, they would just go to a website. They would have, you know, talk to a chat board, answer these five questions. And if they qualify, they'll suddenly be like, okay, I'll pick the time. Thursday, 345 is when I can talk to somebody because I can, I'm on a break then. And they were just able to progress and move this process uh, forward much quicker. I love that. Well, and, and to your point, they, they know they're qualified, right? I mean, yes. it, I've been with my family of companies for going on 10 years. So, that, so I, I haven't been in that same scenario. However, I think of all of the people that do more contract roles, uh, you know, consultant opportunities, locum tenant, like these environments where uh, it's changing and you do need to constantly reapply. And that's just a part of your career path. And I can't imagine trying to get all the feelers out there and you just don't know if you're qualified or not. And you're being that's asked right. to schedule a call and, especially the, to relate back to that example, if you're a nurse and you're incredibly busy and in your in demand and you've got your family to work with, you know, everything saying, right. I'm going to set aside this precious time. And I don't even know if I'm a fit. Yeah. I could imagine just the, almost some of the relief for these candidates to say, Absolutely. okay, at least it's worth my time. And, and, and with the recruiter. And that's what the candidates expect now. I mean, this is no longer a nice to have automation is no longer an option. It's stable stakes. People expect this from you. I mean, um, if somebody's going to talk to 10 staffing companies and eight of them didn't remember the conversation you had with them last time or didn't remember what kind of job do you want, you know, that's a big turnoff. They're going to work with the other two. 
Uh, and yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you and I have been very different in how our careers have been longevity with certain companies, but most people today are changing jobs quickly. It's the yeah. gig economy. They're doing, you know, multiple assignments at the same time. So we just have to make sure that our supply chain sort of keeps up with that. Yeah, no, that that's great. That's awesome. And, you know, as we, as we talk about this topic of how AI and automation can really add value and cost solutions, is there anything else that you think would be helpful for people, whether it's a podcast you listen to or a book you you've read or, or anything that you you know people you'd point them to that if they want to learn more about this obviously you know as we can see by the t-shirt like if they want to learn about sense they talk to <laughs> you um so but if they want to learn just more about this topic or places that you're finding value is there anything that you would share point people yeah, in direction? I mean, absolutely and you know uh, uh, i certainly don't this is not a sense commercial right i mean for us right. the whole idea is we have a lot of thought leadership on our YouTube channel. You can go to the Sense YouTube channel. We've got lots of blog articles. What we are really doing is we are publishing case study after case study of what real companies are able to accomplish using automation. Now, you may pick something else to do automation. You may pick a completely different set of tools and completely different set of solutions. All of that is totally fine. I think what everybody just needs to know is that this is how the modern staffing company would be distinguished from the ones that didn't uh, sort of keep up with times. Uh, what's been very gratifying to me over the past few months is there are staffing companies we work with now that had not changed anything in 40 years. They're owner-led companies. They were started 42 years ago. They've been doing business this exact same way. You could tell when we start talking to them that we are literally the first ever technology they are even thinking of adopting and they're all very scared. Yeah. Uh, but then the same people, you know, three, six months later are like, this has completely changed our company. Our recruiters are making more money. Our people are sending us all these notes saying, you know, I didn't even knew you remember my birthday or, you know, I didn't even know right. you know, check in with me on first day or first week or what have you. So anyway, I mean, I think my, uh, my advice to everybody would be, um, you know, just read up more on the impact that automation is having on companies. Most companies are sharing this openly on LinkedIn uh, as well. Uh, and obviously, you know, we're happy to help. We will give you a lot more information about this as well. And, not necessarily just from sense, but just as a thought leader on what AI and automation can do for you. No, I love that. And honestly, that's that's the reality of it, right? There's there's a number of good uh, resources and, yeah. and HR tech in general. Uh, our industry, as everybody knows, tends to be really, really niche, right? You Everybody's working with an ATS, so it's not as easy to jump out to a classic marketing automation tool like a HubSpot Pardot, Marketo, you know, uh, these, these tools that every other industry says, well, yeah, we've got a million options. You do, but it requires a lot of, uh, a lot of integration, right? And so um, what I love is having conversations with companies that are so specifically focused on our staffing and recruiting industry. But to your point, uh, I just have to reiterate this. It's not about Parka. It's not about Sense. It's about as a staffing or recruiting from owner or leader or marketer, think about where it's going. And, and some people listening may be like, you know what, I'm feeling really good. You know, like we, we invested in these things a few years ago. I, I assume we were behind. And then I talked to other people and we're ahead. Whereas other companies are like, oh, <laughs> this is table stakes now and we have to figure it out. So yeah, I, I would, I would echo what you said, you know, just to, to look into some of the resources out there about how this is helping companies. Um, because it's just like anything with your business, you know, like once everybody decided they needed to have a website and needed to move out of spreadsheets and into ATSs. I mean, this is a, a massive revolution that's been happening the last number of years, but it's becoming uh, expected now yeah. by candidates and clients. Yeah. I mean, you said something that I think is very important. So I will repeat that for a second. Uh, you know, we come across companies thinking of or using HubSpot, Marketo, Pardots all the time. Uh, I think one of the things that most people realize is staffing is very much an industry that still centers around a system of record, you know, your ATS. And if none, none of these systems integrate with your ATS, which they don't, I mean, unless you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to build custom integrations, uh, that's where you're going to see a big bang for your buck. Just make sure you're using a solution, you're adopting a technology that integrates with your ATS, that has taken the time to understand your entities and your fields and things that are important to you. Eventually, you want your recruiters to spend all their time in the ATS. You want all the information to flow into the ATS. Uh, and you know, I know this for a fact now that there is 
every kind of technology that you need exists today for the staffing industry specifically that does integrate with your ATSs. So before you start looking outside of that ecosystem, right. make sure you evaluate within the ecosystem. Right. And, and something that I love in conversations with, you know, you and other, other people in this space is that everybody's looking to progress, right? Everybody's saying, okay, we, we have these table state components as a part of our marketing automation tool and our technology platforms. But, uh, you know, I know companies like yours are saying, okay, what's next? Like, what yeah. else do we need to be offering to staffing and recruiting firms? And some of those questions that I started hearing at Staffing World were around, how do I tailor the messaging to the right people? And how do I know that my segmentation is specific enough that I'm not just sending a general message that it's deployed perfectly through a tool like Sense, but I don't know if the message is right. You know, so there's there's a lot of things to kind of say, right? Even if you've been focused on this the last few years, you know, back up and say, is is this the most thoughtful approach? What is our strategy with using this? Uh, and and how do we better enhance it? And some of that's going to come down to working with your audience and saying. In order to best serve you, we want to make sure we've got accurate information. Can you upload an updated resume? Can you fill out this updated form? Not to put more work on you, but so that we can serve you up opportunities that are most relevant to you. And so I think it's going mm -hmm. to become more and more of a, a partnership, you know, with, with the client candidate audience, with the staffing firms, with the technology providers they use. Absolutely. You know, we talk about uh, innovation and a modern staffing company all the time. And if you think about it, I mean, even though staffing is a very complicated industry and there are numbers of moving pieces but at the very heart of it there is a candidate who comes to your website or there is a candidate you find somehow mm -hmm. so that's step one step two is understanding what they want and what they have what do they have experience with step three is automatically matching that to the open opportunities that you have and step four is submitting them to those opportunities in a timely fashion. Now, all these four tenants that I mentioned can absolutely be automated. Some of them 100%, some of them 10% to various different degrees. But as you automate that experience where a candidate feels like very quickly, I talked to somebody, they understood what I want, they told me what they have available and I got submitted and I'm in the process now and that's exactly what you can do because you don't control every step of the process those are the staffing companies that I think will win. And a lot of their tech stack will be based on some level of AI and automation. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Well, thank you so much, Pankaj. This has been a really fun conversation. And I know we've just, you know, hit the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we could talk for days on a lot of these different uh, components. And so, yeah, like I said before, if anybody has questions, uh, ping either of us on LinkedIn, uh, like I said, we both nerd out about these topics. Yeah. And so uh, I, I would venture to say, you know, we're, we're fans of the industry and we're looking to advance it. And so anything that you guys need help with, um, you know, shoot a comment below. And the two of us are certainly not the answers to everything either, right? Like I want to hear what other people are solving and figuring out and uh, some of the cool things you guys are seeing. So uh, Pankaj, thank you so much. Uh, and everyone, I appreciate you joining us. We will see you on here next time as we do another fireside chat. We'll talk Kelly, soon. Yeah, Kelly, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Super fun talking to you and thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.